How predictable. The guy that lives in Pennsylvania decides to do Maryland as the second state in the U.S. series. For those that are not caught up, I have begun embarking on a series that breaks down each U.S. state. Welcome to episode two of 50 Nifty United States featuring Maryland. I really like the loose format that I used in the Pennsylvania video where we didn't really focus on one topic but just tried to talk about a little bit of everything involving the state. So I've sort of modeled this video off of that one. If you have not watched the Pennsylvania video yet, please go and do so after this. So with that said, we're going to dive right in. Maryland, abbreviated with MD, is another mid-Atlantic state. Its capital is Annapolis. It has two nicknames, that being the Free State and the Old Line State. Its flag looks like this. It has 23 counties and a population of about 6.2 million as of 2024. That makes it the fifth most densely populated U.S. state. It's a pretty small one. A little side note, there are no U.S. presidents that come from Maryland. I forgot to do this part on the Pennsylvania video, but there are two from Pennsylvania those being James Buchanan and Joe Biden. Maryland is one of the 13 colonies. It was the seventh state admitted to the Union in April of 1788. Its original borders can date back to 1632. This man, named Cecile Calvert, was granted the land running from the Potomac River to the 40th latitude, all the way out to the straight line by Fairfax Stone, which now resides in West Virginia. But then, there was a problem. Pennsylvania was basically like, hey, your territory so does not extend that far north. And there was actually a little war known as the Cressup's War over this in 1736, named after Thomas Cressup. Hooray, infighting. And if you recall from the Pennsylvania video, Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon settled this with the drawing of the Mason-Dixon line. Fun fact, right about here, there's less than two miles between the Potomac and the Mason-Dixon line, making it the thinnest point between any two U.S. states. This almost straight border from Delaware exists because Maryland was originally a Catholic majority state, which the Dutch colonists in Delaware were not a fan of. So a line was drawn from the Atlantic to what is known as the Delmarva's Point before shifting upwards towards Pennsylvania. Its other border with Virginia to the south is based off of the Pocomoke River in the east. This created a dispute over oysters for like 200 years. So all in all, it touches only Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia, and West Virginia. Now as you can imagine, a lot of native tribes built their towns along these rivers. Most of them are Algonquian speaking, and there are still descendants of them living in Maryland today. Obviously, it's not as extensive as it used to be because, well, you know. But tribes from other states like North Carolina actually also moved to the Chesapeake area over time, such as the Lumbi. Now, according to LibGuides, there are actually three major tribes that still live in Maryland. These would be the Algonquian, the Iroquois, and the Suin. Left a source for this in the video in case anybody wants to um actually me like I do in all of my videos. As I said, the early colonizers were mainly Catholics and the English gentry. That was basically a wealthy social class of well-born landowners. Oh, I'd have never guessed that one. Maryland would then get its name from Queen Henrietta Maria, who was the wife of King Charles I of England. Ha, ah, what a simp. We've already covered the border formation and rivers of this mid-Atlantic state, but looking at some more of the geography, it's somewhat similar to Pennsylvania. However, unlike Pennsylvania, it actually has a coast. The Chesapeake Bay divides it into the eastern and western shores, and this was actually created by a giant meteor millions of years ago. Therefore, much of it is considered lowlands. This is a grand total of 8,384 square kilometers, with about half of it falling within Maryland's jurisdiction. A lot of the land westward is characterized as part of the Piedmont Plateau, covering all this space, rolling upland with gorges separated by rivers. Some of the rivers we did not already mention include the Patapsco, running through Baltimore, the Patuxent, which drains in the western shore, and the Susquehanna that runs over the PA border. Further west, the Appalachian Mountains run right through, and that's where you'll find the state's highest point, Backbone Mountain at 1,025 meters high. Being coastal, Maryland has several islands, one of the most famous ones would be the Assateague Island, which is known for a massive wild horse population. There's also the Smith Island and Tielemann Islands, both known for their seafoods, and the Solomon Islands, not to be confused with the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Many highways run through the super populated parts of Maryland, especially towards Washington, D.C. I-95 runs right through the whole state longitude, with 68 and 70 running latitude. I guess I could also talk about railroads, which I also didn't do in the Pennsylvania video, but then I remembered. This is the U.S. So let's move into some more cities, and naturally we're going to start with Baltimore. This was established in 1729, being a seaport city that became famous for shipbuilding. 
The first U.S. Navy ship called the Constellation was launched here in 1797, and the last all-sail warship was built here in 1855. You can still see that in the Inner Harbor to this day. I do not recommend going for a swim there should you visit, as the water is filthier than the armpits of a crust punk. The Continental Congress also met here in 1776, as it was feared that the British would attack Philadelphia. More importantly, though, Baltimore was vital during the War of 1812. The U.S. held off the British from Fort McHenry, a national monument that you can still see to this day, and this is what inspired the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. In 1814, General John Strickler held back the British advance in what is known as the Battle of North Point, playing a pivotal role in all of this. I've never been more wrong in my life. I am going to mention a railroad. The nation's first railroad station, Mount Clare, is also preserved here, and while Maryland never seceded from the Union, a lot of Southern sympathizers remained in Baltimore, and the Union would occupy it. These days, seafood still plays a large role in the city's identity, especially Maryland blue crabs, and this is also where Old Bay was created. Hell, there's even a whole store for just that. Check out High School Me again. People like to travel to Baltimore for the National Aquarium, which displays a plethora of aquatic life from around the world, including over a thousand different species. A popular area is also the historic Fells Point, where the cobblestone streets still remain in front of all sorts of restaurants, bars, and businesses. Nightlife is very popular here, and I'd also like to note the record store known as Soundgarden. This was voted the second best one in the entire country by Rolling Stone. I've spent extensive time here, especially the summer I lived in Maryland. In terms of stadiums, they've got the M&T Bank Stadium where the Baltimore Ravens play, and the Oriole Park at Camden Yards. People in Baltimore and Maryland as a whole really go crazy for Natty Bow, a type of beer that I personally don't like. It was originally brewed in Baltimore, but has not been for many years. Of course, I mentioned the Inner Harbor already, which also hosts a hotbed of restaurants and bars, shops, and venues, such as the Power Plant, which includes the Ram's Head stage, and the Pier 6 Pavilion. Before we move on, I'll note that you can also find UMBC and the John Hopkins University, two of the most important universities in the city, probably in the whole state. Real quick, we're going to take a peek at the slightly overlooked capital of Annapolis. Just like Harrisburg in Pennsylvania, it is far from the largest city. The main claim to fame for Annapolis would be that it's the home of the U.S. Naval Academy, and therefore it's heavily influenced by military aesthetics. But much like Baltimore, it has its main downtown strip too, known as Maryland Avenue, for your best spots to eat, shop, and drink. We're gonna rock down to Maryland Avenue. Historically, it's been called the Athens of America, and you can still see the state house where George Washington resigned as general of the Continental Army. Being basically on the Chesapeake Bay, there's a lot of boat and yacht culture as well. Speaking of which, let's hop eastward to the Atlantic coast. Much of the beach strip is taken up by Delaware, but not Ocean City. Now, I may be a little biased because I grew up going here with my family, and there may have been a few drunken nights in my early 20s spent here, but I think it's got one of the neatest boardwalks in the entire strip of the beaches. The downtown area is flooded with nightlife over the summer, but if I'm being real, anybody older than 25 might find this demographic to be a bit of a pain. But it's got its charm, and if you can get past the plethora of teenagers moving through here for summer jobs, and the outrageous prices for an ice cream cone or a slice of pizza, you'll do just fine. <laughs> Guess I didn't do a great job selling that one. Moving out west, we'll take a look at another city known as Frederick. This one's actually a really good focal point for African American history, as a lot of US slavery was born here, between plantations and farms and even iron furnaces. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, this population would see a large amount of warfare, and a lot of blacks volunteered for the US Army as well as the hospitals in the war effort. Ever since the Civil War ended, it gradually became a good spot for African American communities, businesses, schools, to the extent that they were able to grow throughout time. As you may know, even after slavery, that wasn't particularly easy. Elizabeth Ann Seton was born here. She is considered the first saint born in the U.S. All of this should make it no surprise that there's a heavy emphasis on museums out here, and actually the greater county holds a lot of the nicest walking trails in the state. Columbia, Maryland is named the best place to live in the state by Money Magazine, with Silver Spring being not too far from the top as well. There's the quiet, cobblestone old town of Ellicott City, one of my favorites that I've ever visited, and there's even one called Germantown. The latter is actually surrounded by rural areas, a decent spot for hunting and fishing, and there's no shortage of underground railroad history in all of Montgomery County. Smaller cozy towns like Havre de Grace, Bel Air, and Berlin are also found all over the place, though they tend to be less backwoodsy save for the western areas. And on that note, I think we'll move on from cities. Maryland has two main Civil War sites, the Antietam and the Monocacy. The victory at Antietam is what granted President Lincoln the needed grounds for getting the Emancipation Proclamation delivered. 
Should you want to visit, it gives a great look at the hardships of workers and farmers during this time. Monocacy is named after a river where the Union soldiers were impossibly outnumbered by the Confederates in 1864, but they were still able to hold them back and prevent them from capturing Washington. Like PA, Maryland has all sorts of state and national parks, one of the most important ones being Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Historic Park. Whoa, what a mouthful. This is a good spot to learn about her efforts of leading the slaves to freedom. And I'd like to talk about Harper's Ferry, but it's technically in West Virginia, so we'll save it for that episode, but it is right on the border. With Natty Bow no longer being brewed in Maryland, the title for the largest brewery would go to Heavy Seas, and while liquor laws here aren't nearly as abysmal as some states, <coughs> there's certainly different flavors of issues. Some people in Maryland might tell you that it is very expensive to live in and the cost of living is through the roof. Part of this might be attributed to having extremely high taxes as well, but what do you expect when you use taxes to fund war machines instead of human needs? Whoa! Apparently it's also one of the worst states in terms of gun laws. With that said, there are a plethora of brands that you might recognize that were founded in Maryland, such as McCormick, Under Armour, Discovery, Marriott International, and everyone's favorite war machine profiteer, Lockheed Martin. Looking more towards the natural wonders of the state, there's a lot to be found, especially in the overlooked western regions. Swallow Falls State Park is known for its waterfalls and lush greenery in the summer or frozen landscapes in the winter with the state's tallest free fall waterfall muddy creek falls at 53 feet nearby sits the deep creek lake a reservoir spanning nearly 4,000 acres taking the title of the largest freshwater body of water in maryland believe it or not there is only one cave system in the whole state, that being the Crystal Grottoes Caverns, discovered in 1920 while workers were quarrying for limestone. The Calvert Cliffs are absolutely a sight to behold too, which is found in the southern regions of the Chesapeake shoreline. If you like sunflowers, I've got some cool news for you. Maryland also holds the sunflowers at McKee Besher's Wildlife Management Area. This beautiful landscape is maintained by the authorities and they bloom every year in July before being rescattered to provide food for doves. Ooh, and what a good time to start talking about some animals. The Sika deer can be found throughout the southern areas of the state and it's actually an invasive species from Japan. They were released here in 1916, found mostly in the wetlands of Dorchester County, and thankfully they steer clear of needing to compete with the native white-tailed deer found further north. The Baltimore Oriole is rather common. I really can't believe they named a whole bird after a baseball team. And the Diamondback Terrapin is considered a sign of healthy bays. Other interesting ones include the Jer Falcon, being the largest of its type, and the Timber Rattlesnake, quite venomous, but good at controlling rodent populations. Because Maryland is coastal and mountainous, its climate has a bit of a range. It could be hot and humid, it could be cold and mild, it could be an extreme version of heat or cold, depending where you are, when you are. Maryland is also home to several theme parks, including Six Flags, Chesapeake Beach Water Park, and Jolly Roger Amusement Park. Port Deposit is found very close to Pennsylvania's border, being the home of the popular Lee's Landing, a great dock bar with a sandy beach vibe. I bring this up not only because we celebrated my mother 50th birthday there, but also because it's a good spot to see the Susquehanna River. And it's also very close to the Conowingo Dam. This is the largest dam in the state and one of the largest non-federal hydroelectric dams in the entire country. Now if you remember me mentioning PA's awful liquor laws, that means that the liquor taxes are pretty high too, right? People from Pennsylvania never cross state borders to get alcohol cheaper because that would be illegal. Culturally, Marylanders love their festivals, and they tend to have a bit of a blend of northern and southern culture. Ethnic festivals like the Caribbean Carnival and Parade are something to reckon with, and the melting pot of ethnicities makes the state feel at least somewhat diverse. I already mentioned their love of natty bow and blue crabs, but other common foods might be the Smith Island cake, which is full of like eight thin layers stacked up. Pit beef and Chesapeake Bay oysters are also a hit, and several crab dishes include, of course, the crab cake and the popular Maryland crab soup. Yeah, it uses Old Bay, if you were wondering. I already mentioned that the state was mainly settled by English Catholics, but I don't really think that that plays much of a role in the identity these days. And in terms of politics, Maryland is very much a blue state, probably being one of the most Democrat-leaning ones in the entire country. And with that, let's wrap this up. Maryland's a very tiny state, but it's also one of the oldest ones, and it holds some of the most important history, along with the other 12 original colonies. It's very culturally diverse, and it's probably one of the states that has more significance to the War of 1812 than the War of Independence. Now, I've only been to about a third of the U.S. states so far, but as of now, it's definitely one of my favorite ones. Let me know what you thought, and if you live in Maryland or grew up in Maryland, please tell me what you thought of this in the comments, or if I missed anything. Don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet again, 